How are you going? As you've probably heard, Australia is full of deadly sharks. Our beautiful Sydney Harbour is infested with sharks. And this is a problem for me, as there is nothing I love more than going for a nice swim, snorkel or spear with a steak stuffed down my pants. And obviously, I could just find another hobby, but it really is the best way to brine my meat. So instead, I'm going to make a shark bite resistant wetsuit so I can safely go steak swimming whenever and wherever I want. Okay, now despite fear-mongering, shark attacks and deaths in Australia are actually not very common, and sharks don't want to eat us. Here's a list of things that are way more dangerous to do in Australia. Eating a delicious pizza. Eating that pizza with your husband. Ordering that pizza using Uber Eats. Eating the leftovers at work the next day. And having a drink after work. All of which are way more dangerous. But even though I know I'm not likely to get eaten by a shark, I'm always thinking about it while underwater. Unlike the other dangers on the list, probably because my ex-husband can't swim. So hopefully a tough wetsuit will help me relax. And there are actually some shark-proof wetsuits currently on the market, but they cost over a grand. So I'm gonna try and copy them on the cheap. And to start, I'm gonna use an old neoprene wetsuit and this stuff, UHMWPE, which is a super strong stab-proof fabric used commonly in a place way more dangerous than Australian oceans, American prisons. And hopefully, if I just cut out the fabric and sew it on top of these panels, I'll have a warm, shark-proof wetsuit. But first, I couldn't resist testing how strong this stuff is. And it seems to work well against my teeth, scissors, and a knife. That is strong stuff. But sharks don't have scissors as teeth. So I made this shark tooth hammer using real bull shark teeth, which should simulate exactly what it's like to get attacked by a hammer with shark teeth glued on the top and it put heaps of deep cuts into this pair. So now I just put the fabric over the top. There is no damage to that. And look at that, there is not a single cut in this pair, which gives me enough confidence to waste my time making a wetsuit out of the stuff. But now I have my first physical and philosophical problem. How do I cut a cut proof material? I tried scissors. I tried a circular saw. Why did I think that would work? I even made a hot scalpel blade attachment, but nothing works, which means I'm gonna have to spend money and buy an industrial pizza cutter, which does an all right job on pizza and an even better job on this fabric. I then got this plastic sheet and tried my best to trace out the shape of the panels on the wetsuit, which was way harder than it should have been. Then, once I traced it, I cut out the plastic and then traced it onto the fabric, and then repeated this process for every panel of the wetsuit. Now, I think you're meant to use this machine with one hand, but I found I got better results if I used both hands to guide the fabric straight into the blade. Only problem is, if I slip, I fall face first into it. And now comes the part I purposely didn't want to think about, figuring out how I'm going to attach this fabric to the neoprene. And sewing is the most obvious answer, but this stuff snaps needles like crazy. So instead I'm going to attempt to glue the panels using a spray on fabric glue. And I decided not to do the whole piece in one go, instead I would glue a little bit on, pressing it down, and then let it dry for 5 minutes and then come back and do a bit more. So this was my routine for a couple of days. Glue a bit down, go watch YouTube. Glue a bit more down, go watch YouTube. Glue some more, then watch YouTube. Glue some more, go watch YouTube. Glue some more. Go watch YouTube. <coughs> and then it was done. And it looks a bit rough. So I used these Kevlar scissors to cut off the scrap bits and then used my favorite rubber glue to seal the edges to make sure it doesn't peel off. And here we go. It looks great from a distance. So let's see if the fabric is still stab proof. 
and the fabric actually seems stronger, which is probably because the glue keeps the fibers in place, which doesn't allow the knife to slip in between them. And if we do a before and after shot of the old, boring, faded wetsuit compared to the new one, the new one looks much better. Now, unless you've been living under a cock, you've definitely heard of today's sponsor, NordVPN. I've been using NordVPN for years and it allows me to have peace of mind while using the internet as it protects all my data and web activity. So before, this was how I browsed the internet with barely any protection. But now I have this tough wetsuit, which represents NordVPN and stops all the bad guys that want to get what's on the other side. But with NordVPN, all your internet data is protected behind a wall of next generation encryption. NordVPN has over 5,200 servers in 60 countries. Nord is incredibly useful for me, especially when I'm looking up how to make questionable things and want to remain protected and secure. It's also great for changing locations in the world so I can get behind paywalls. So go now to get an exclusive NordVPN deal at nordvpn.com slash I did a thing. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. That's NordVPN com slash I did a thing. Okay, back to it. And I want a real test against a real shark. And luckily I have this map by a university which shows me the best spots for getting attacked by bull sharks in Sydney Harbour. So I headed down to one spot at night to see if I could get the sharks to have a bite of my wetsuit. And at first I wanted to put this mannequin in the wetsuit and then stuff it full of fish heads to attract the sharks. But I realized I probably shouldn't be teaching sharks that people shaped objects are filled with delicious fish. So instead I made two parcels of fish heads, one wrapped in just neoprene and the other with a stab proof material and the neoprene. And then I also covered it in tuna blood and guts, which should help attract the sharks. And then I just chucked them in the harbor and waited. And waited. And waited some more. And some more. And I repeated this all around Sydney Harbor for a week, throwing it in, pulling it out. Throwing it in. Pulling it out. And nothing happened. But then this happened. Good evening. We begin our broadcast with breaking news. There's been a suspected fatal shark attack at Little Bay near Malabar. For the first time in 60 years, horrifically, a swimmer was killed by a five metre great white off Sydney, which filled me full of hope that I could get a shark to attack my wetsuit. So I got my stuff and headed back out to the harbour, but this time with some hooks as well, so I could try to catch a shark and then pull it in and get it to bite the wetsuit. But after another week of trying, nothing. And if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded in so long, this is why. I spent three weeks trying to catch a shark in Sydney and I failed, which strangely made me feel a little bit jealous of the man that was eaten by the shark. Why had the sharks chosen them? and not me. But I've got a backup plan. I'll make my own shark. And I'm gonna start with this log splitter, which isn't very good at splitting logs. But I reckon I can use this massive eight ton hydraulic ram it's built around to mimic a shark bite. So I bought a piece of five mil thick steel plate, which I forgot to film. So here's me carrying a one mil thick piece, but pretending it's really heavy. And instead of attempting to cut through five mil sheet metal with a grinder, I got some help from a mate and used a tool I've never used before, a plasma cutter. How you feet going? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's blasting straight onto my feet. Well, I'll see how I go, I'll just, I'll stand in a wide. Stand wide, stand wide, wide go slow. Ah. <laughs> You'll be right. I'll stand in a wide stance. And after a lot of burning myself, yeah, I need to stop this no shoe joke. Yeah, right. Burning other things. And some banging. Oh, yeah. Yes. I finally managed to cut out the pieces of the sharks. Hey. Now I have these Pac-Man looking pieces. So I knocked off all the slags and cleaned them up on the grinder and then did the same to the jaw pieces. And now that I have the jaw pieces, I need to make some kind of hinge to join them together. And I think I can do this by taking off this hinge from my front door. so I can get outside and drive to the shops to buy these two pieces of round bar. 
Then I just made a big hole in them, which I put a bolt into. And now if I weld one side to the top and the other side to the bottom, the jaw should move. But after the welding, oh, it, won't move. it all seized up. So I did the same thing my dentist does and wiggled my jaw back and forth until it grinds itself away and the jaw moves freely. Okay, now the jaw needs some teeth and I'm not willing to buy some real ones as most of them are unethically sourced, but more importantly, are very expensive. So instead, I turned this piece of angle bar into the world's most dangerous comb and then tack welded each tooth on the shark until it had some gills, I mean grills, and then welded them into place. Then I figured I should make some support to stop the shark biting through its own head. So I welded some scrap metal together and then put them in the middle and then adjusted them by eye until it was right. And here we go. I am unbelievably happy that these teeth actually fit together and don't touch each other. So I cleaned up the jaw and then decided I would put the two Pac-Man pieces on top. and then welded them into place. Okay, once I had welded them on, I realized I forgot to do something very important. Make the eye holes, which sharks always drill out first with a drill press before welding their head together. And I thought maybe I could use my drill press sideways in this position. That was so close to my foot. But instead I used my chest as a press and wedged the drill in between until it went through. Then it was time to add the jaw. And if you're wondering why I'm alternating between sides, it's because metal is notorious for getting jealous and you get a better weld if you share your love equally across all parts of the metal. Now just a quick test to see if it actually moves. Yes. Yeah. And it does, which means it's time for a coat of paint. Now you're probably thinking this doesn't look like any shark you've ever seen before. And you would be right, but that's because I haven't added the pants yet. Now, I'm really worried about this shark destroying itself first go. So I came up with a really simple switch, which will safely turn off the jaws when the bottom reaches the top. All I did was get the power cord from the hydraulic press and put it in the mouth. So when the jaws fully close, it cuts the cord and safely turns itself off. Okay, it's time for the test. And I've got a smorgasbord of treats for the shark. And first up is a naked leg of lamb. And I honestly don't know why I thought this would be exhilarating YouTube viewing, but as you can see, the shark closed its mouth and there are now four deep holes all the way through the lamb. Then I put the lamb in a family member's wetsuit, which should hopefully keep it warm and provide some resistance. Oh, what was that? And I thought the wetsuit might have done something as the holes in the neoprene looked smaller. But after I took it out, the penetration was exactly the same. Oh my god, wait, this one's gone through bone. That is terrifying. Okay, now for the tough fabric, which I just wrapped once around the outside of the lamb wetsuit. And after seeing the teeth sink all the way in and leave some pretty big holes, I wasn't hopeful. They're pretty deep. Wait, what? There are no punctures in the wetsuit. And look at that, they don't go through. They're just little, little dimples. And there's no puncture. There, there's a, there is a hole there, deep there, deep there, and quite a big dent there. So it looks like the fabric does actually make a big difference, which means this wetsuit would 100% save your life and work against a real shark, as this metal shark in my garage that only closes its mouth once and really slowly is an exact replica of a real shark. Okay, now to crush some more stuff with my shark. Let's try a cow leg bone. And no, I'm not being racist. I'm just squinting to stop bone fragments from shooting into my eyes. 
like this. And now, let's see what it does to some lamb ribs. Hey, we made it through. That is terrifying. That is through bones. Delicious. Yum, 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 yum. And after cleaning up the bone fragments that were scattered into every corner of my garage, I put the remaining meat inside my wetsuit and went down to the local beach for a safe, relaxing swim. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos.